Hello and welcome to another episode of What Travis Says. My name is Travis and this is my third time attempting to film this video. Oh goodness. So I was going to film this video Monday morning and then some issues with my car insurance and my license came up and I needed to go take care of that because that's more important than YouTube. And earlier this morning I tried to film the video and this happened. Hello and welcome to another episode of What Travis Says. My name is Travis and let's talk about Doctor Who. So yeah, now that it's a little more in focus, let's try this again. Hello and welcome to another episode of What Travis Says. My name is Travis and let's talk about Doctor Who. More specifically, Season 11, Episode 8, The Witch Finders. Now if you've not yet watched the episode The Witch Finders, do not watch this video any farther for there will be spoilers. So one of the biggest compliments to Jodie Whittaker up until this point is that her adventures and her attitude has been sort of interchangeable to previous regenerations. That these are the same adventures that could have happened during Eleven's time or Ten's time. That these adventures work with the Doctor. That Jodie Whittaker is the Doctor. But this episode, The Witch Finders, is a different beast altogether for all of the right reasons. So the Doctor and Co. accidentally find themselves in Bilehurst Crag smack in the middle of a witch tree. Trial. They are once again visiting the past, much like Rosa or Demons of the Punjab, and the doctor tells them, do not interfere. No matter what, don't mess with the past. Landowner Mistress Becca Savage is drowning her 36th witch, so she's rather proficient. And of course, the doctor, uh, interferes because she's the Doctor. So the Doctor whips out her psychic paper to Savage, takes upon the role of Witchfinder General, and halts all witch trials for the time being. The Doctor wants to take control of the situation and find out exactly what is going on, which is a very doctory thing to do, and she almost does it, except that King James decides to show up and derails her entire plan, and any allyship that the Doctor and Savage might have ever had is completely decimated when King James whips off his mask. Played by Alan Cumming, KJ is delightful to watch and steals every single scene that he's in, going from flamboyantly humorous to menacingly savage on a whim. Speaking of savage, remember how Becca Savage believed that the Doctor was the Witchfinder General? Well, KJ doesn't entirely believe that and thinks that Graham is the Witchfinder General and that the Doctor is his Witchfinder's assistant. Because a woman could never be a general. Ha! And you then see this look of struggle and disappointment just wash over the Doctor's face as she realizes, oh yeah, I'm in the form of a woman now. This is going to be a little tricky. And it's because of that that we finally get to see the Doctor struggle with the new challenges of her regeneration. It reminds her that her new incarnation is that of a woman, so her usual style of just bursting into the room and demanding answers might not always work. Remember how last week we talked about how in Kerblam that was the 13th Doctor's first time of bursting into the room to the would-be villains and demanding answers? Well, now we see that that can't exactly happen every single time, especially in the past. Which makes this the very first episode where the 13th Doctor's new gender is actually a major plot point and it works. King James has this casual dismissal of women, saying that they have an innate aptitude for nosiness and gossip. And this episode focuses on the unjust persecution of women for the failing crops and for being in league with Satan. And King James knows a thing or two about Satan. It also shows that religion can be twisted as a justification for violence during a time of fear of the unknown. There are some touching moments with Yaz and Ryan and King James have some fantastic interactions, but this was primarily a Doctor-centric episode. She goes between empathy and cold steeliness in her interactions between Savage and King James, and they are some of the best Doctor scenes that we've seen in a long while. But the episode takes a very dark turn when the women in the episode start turning on one another. And the Doctor finds herself in a situation where none of her other male iterations ever would have found themselves in tried for witchcraft. Sure, the Doctor has had many run-ins with would-be witches and curses whilst traveling time and space. Even Susan Foreman was accused of being a witch during the Salem witch trials. 
in the novel The Witch Hunters, so if that's canon, that's up to you. This is one of the only times when the Doctor has been sweepingly targeted in this way. The closest episode that I can think as an example would be Midnight. And the Doctor was targeted in Midnight because he was clever, and the Doctor is targeted in The Witch Finders because she is clever and also a woman. King James, afraid of what he doesn't entirely understand, believes that the Doctor is a witch and wants to put her on trial. Even going as far as to say that she has a magic wand, but he takes his opportunity to converse with an agent of Satan. The Doctor and King James are going back and forth about their respective philosophies, but they essentially want the same thing. They both have questions about the nature of the universe. The difference is that the Doctor is curious and flexible and able to admit when she's wrong and she loves learning new things that she has no idea about. King James, on the other hand, Satan's greatest foe, is very rigid when it comes to his religious beliefs. He is unable to accept what he can't understand as anything less than that of the devil. But like I said, he goes back and forth between humor and savagery so wonderfully that it's hard to hate the guy. Although when it's revealed that it's an imprisoned alien army causing these muddy possessions, and Becca Savage was behind the witch trials in an effort to keep her muddy injury a secret, and King James is still screaming about how it's the work of Satan, it's like, dude, come on. Real world human villainy, a theme that we've definitely seen in every single episode of this season, but hey, there are some aliens mixed in this time as well. Savage wanted to prevent her own damnation, so she went on a bit of a murder spree in the name of God in order to save herself. And adding the alien element is... Fine, I guess. Yeah, it's Doctor Who, and yeah, any sort of witchcraft would probably end up being some sort of alien interference, because it's Doctor Who. And when they said the phrase, bewitched lands, it was kind of obvious where this was headed. But the ending of this episode just felt kind of weird and rushed. Savage cut down a tree, and the imprisoned warrior race of the Morax was released. Kinda. The reanimated not-mud creatures were definitely creepier before the Queen Morax took over Savage's body and started waxing poetic about taking over the world or whatnot. And then they are defeated because the Doctor is able to repair the lock and then they all get sucked back in? Okay. The alien menace sort of felt forced and the ending was kind of rushed, but... The first two-thirds of this episode were incredibly solid, and any of the King James Doctor interactions were fantastic. And they were able to have the Doctor face these gender struggles without making it seem forced, or as just because. I don't know, I feel like the good definitely outweighs the bad in this episode, and it was definitely one of the better ones this season. In the comments down below, let me know your thoughts on The Witch Finders. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did something catch your eye that I didn't mention in this video? Let's talk about it. But as always, my name is Travis. Thank you for listening to what I have to say, and you will see me soon.